Good afternoon, everyone. This is Andrea from My World by Andrea, and I'm in Tampa at one of the book signings of the many ones that I'm doing this year. And I'm here and been graced with the presence of Bob Dixon. Bob Dixon is an author. He's going to let us know why he's here, what books he has brought with him so his fans and maybe new fans can uh, read. He's going to let us know if he's going to be at any other book signings this year. He's going to let you know where you can find him, stalk him, whichever one you want to call it, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those wonderful places. And anything else that may be happening in his world that he thinks that we should know about. Good afternoon, Bob. Nice to meet you. Hey, thanks for having me. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule. It's about ready to get really hectic here. Should be fun. Uh, it starts at 2 o'clock, and it should be crazy until Monday. Uh, sure. But uh, you're here as a signing author. You have brought books with you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I got, I got books. Darn it. That's, That's what absolutely. I uh, so, what uh, genre do you write, and uh, what did you bring for your fans uh, to purchase this, this well, time? Well, I write a little bit of everything. I, I have uh, two young adult books uh, Mouch and Company, The Dream Psychic, which is my uh, kid with schizophrenia and psychic abilities. So, his imaginary friends are real. His best friends are Sock Puppet and Shadow. Nice. Uh, the other one's called Rags and Ruins, which is a child who ra who's raised in a uh, garbage heap by goblins. Is a child of prophecy. Okay. Uh, I do have a biography I co-wrote for a friend, uh, Will Jones, called Tough Call. It tells his story after he was shot nine times. And my main series is um, my Snafu Football series, which is my uh, adult humor books. Uh, there's two in that series right now. We're currently working on a third. Um, which is two drunk superheroes with absolutely no superpowers whatsoever. And the idea of going on patrol is sitting on the front porch, drinking beers and smoking cigars. Okay. And they protect the uh, city of Lost Hope, Florida from the front porch. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you can be found on Amazon. Are you like on Barnes & Noble? No, uh, anything like that? I am on Amazon. I, I should be on Barnes & Noble, uh, just under Bob Dixon. Okay. Uh, all the uh, typical uh, social media is under author Bob Dixon. Okay. So, so that if you can find him on his Facebook page, it's Bob Dixon. You can find him on Instagram if you, if you have an account with Instagram, that. Instagram, Twitter. Uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, are you over on MeWe like all the other uh, authors are going over that direction? Which one's that? MeWe. No. Apparently not. Apparently, we'll maybe discuss, I need to. We'll discuss that. We shall. When uh, Facebook did their thing, they just did with the big, all the new rules that are coming into effect. A lot of the authors went over to me, we and opened up accounts. Okay, I'm on Vero, which actually a buddy oh. of mine, a, a buddy of mine actually owns that. Really? Yeah. Uh, TJ, uh, he actually owns it created Vero. And Vero is a new social media. Exactly. But yes. I'm, I'm, I'm on Vero. Okay, we'll have to check that out. Is that under Bob Simpson also? Yes, I gotta figure out how to operate that one though because it's got a little oh, tricky. Yeah. Well, I just haven't got into it. And like I said, I, I, I opened the account because, like I said, a friend of mine who I've known for 30 years actually started it. Okay, right. And I'm, on, I'm big on supporting people who do their own thing. Obviously, I'm a writer with this movie, but right. I'm big on local musicians. I'm big on if, if you're a friend of mine, you're doing your own thing. I'm gonna be there to support you. Right. I got one friend of mine who's an actor, local actor. I go, I go to his plays, okay. and uh, he's actually writing a novel now. Nice. And uh, him, and I was shooting stuff back and forth on books. And he's, he's writing a really good book. I, I won't give any information because that's right. his thing. But uh, his, his first novel, he's really coming out really good. Right. He's good. got a really nice flow to the story. He's got some things. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Right. Somewhere. So that's a good thing. Good. And uh, you're here at this book signing. Do you have any other book signings this year that you're going to uh, be attending? Let me. I, I know I'm doing something in September on the other coast. Uh, it's a um, Space Coast Comic Con. Right. Yes. Um, I think that's all I have lined up for right now. Because uh, okay. I did most of my events at the beginning of the year up to now. Um, and I I am going to do a book release at some point this year, okay. which I'll uh, promote on the social medias and all, okay. uh, because I just finished a novel, novella, and we're in the editing phase of that, and I just really want to get this one out because it's a really fun book. And right, really and then it. what genre is that falling to? I really don't know. Um, it, it's going to be some dark humor, and it's uh, going to be kind of a... Um, Dealing with hell and the afterlife, okay. so I'm not really sure what genre is going okay. to. I mean, so, it's, not, it's not so much. It's not religious, although it is religious based. Right. Does that okay. Make, you know. 
Okay, so what you need to do is get on his Facebook page, follow him, and follow him on Amazon as well, and then you'll be able to know when this book is releasing. And Goodreads, of course. I mean, and, yes. everybody's on Goodreads. Yes. And um, so I, I, sometimes I ask this question of authors, and sometimes I don't. Uh, but I thought you would might be a good one to answer that because I uh -oh. love the hat, Thank love you. the shirt. Uh, before you start writing, do you have a ritual that you go through? Do you have to get to drunk have and go with? No, uh, <laughs> no. Um, for for me, um, it's weird because a, a friend, you know, as an author, you always get asked, "How do you come up with this and all that?" And uh, a friend of mine came up with a really good saying. He says, "You know, you got all this chaos in your head of creating chaos." And every now and then you have sober moments. Mm -hmm. And then that sober moment, you go, wait a minute, here's an idea, here's the direction, go, and I got this. And, um, like, I uh, I was talking to my buddy who's writing the novel, and we were talking about how sometimes you have a great idea, but you can't get it any farther than the idea stage. Right. And I think that's what happens a lot. I don't want to say what amateurs in any disrespectful way, but a lot of amateur writers who are trying to write a novel. They they got an, they have an idea, but they have no clue how to get from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference between people who get published and stay in the business right. is they find a way to get from the, the, the their origin point mm -hmm. to to the end. And for me, I mean, I just my, my process is all of a sudden I get an idea, and all of a sudden things just start flowing. And I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning with this book running through my head and the characters talking to me. And okay. when that happens, I just put the hammer down and keep writing. And it doesn't always, and it's not always good. It it can be fixed. Right. But I get that story out, and then I, and I, then my wife who does my editing hates me because she goes through and goes, okay, this thing's called punctuation yeah, yeah. in capital letters. That's not important. I'm like, yeah, I, I heard of this. Right. It's kind of like a unicorn. I've never seen it, but I know it is this. So I'm, I'm pretty sure she's wrong. <laughs> So I'm going with that. Yeah. All editors, yeah, we, yeah. No, I love, I love you. Got to love the editors because they. I mean, she, Lily, she's my co-writer because when she goes through and edits, she really makes what I meant to say sound good. Sure. You know, because I mean, that's I what a good editor and, does. And, but you know, and I actually have started putting her as a co-writer because she does so much. She's clean up that it's, it's more than just editing. Right. And I, I give her credit. Now. I mean, I, I have, I'm not in this ego thing with, hey, it's all me. But you know, that's just the writing process for me because I mean, I know people will, will sit down outline the book, they'll have every character drawn out and all that, and literally I've never done that in my life, right. I've sat down and I go, okay, let's tell this story and that's just the way I operate right. it, it, I, my, my, my last book I wrote, which I was talking to you off screen a little bit before, mm -hmm. and I don't want to put too much out there right now, I actually wrote most of that on my cell phone, oh on the Lord. front porch, drinking a beer and smoking a cigar Oh my lord because I get on my porch, I think of an idea, I start writing and the next thing I know, I, I, I typed out a chapter but, I mean, it's 23, 24 chapters long. It's roughly 25,000 words, which right. is a novella. And I literally wrote 22,000 words of it on my cell phone. Wow. I can show you every chapter on my cell phone. And it's sick because you don't write a book that way. No, that, you don't. Any author said so they go, okay, you're just you're killing yeah. yourself. And it, yeah. It's insane. But some you, you can't control when the motivation hits you and when the inspiration right. hits you. And if you try to put in a thing, okay, I'm going to write from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock every day. You better be really good at two to four, because right. if it hits you at four, you know six o'clock, you're screwed. Exactly, that's true. Um, that's true. Plus, I got camels, and he got his camels there. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I told him. I said, I gotta ask you that question because of the hat and the shirt. You know. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You know, like um, I, I'm very lucky because I've been uh, married 27 years. And She's not lucky, I am. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but I've been married to somebody who's very supportive for this. Because when I started, we saw got married. Um, I was writing comic books at the time. And, I mean, we were doing shows all over the country, and, you know, you're on the phone for four hours and ice because we didn't have internet, and you're going back and forth. And to have someone who supports her like that makes a big difference. And, like, she she found the show, she found the hat, because uh, I, I really want a cool hat to do the signings in, and something people will remember. Sure. Because you want them to come back to your table. Exactly. Like, this weekend, we have, 40 authors here? Yeah, something like and that. And so, basically, you're trying to make people remember you. Exactly. Because you're going to make the first out. round... Chance all most people won't go buy anything unless it's something they came here to get, and then they go start doing the shopping. So you want to stand out, and if they remembered your hat, they remember the hat. Okay, wait, well, yeah, I, I saw something that I like. It may only be the hat, but, but you know, maybe they'll come back and buy something. Sure. And you know, we are. I always tell people to do shows for three reasons. First one has to be to have fun. Right. Second one is to make money. Let's be real. 
in the throw in some late contacts and you know sure. network. But I know people who go for only the money. And those people usually walk away unhappy at the end of exactly. the show. It doesn't matter how much you make because you're never going to make enough. Exactly. You know, you never go cover your expenses and have a. I mean, exactly. you, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, we all cover our expenses eventually. But if you go to every show, there's going to be shows that just suck. People are not buying. Yeah. Uh, the, the walkers are walking around. And I mean, I've been at uh, small shows where I've cleaned up. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's hit and miss. If you do this long enough, you're going to have bad shows. Exactly. Where it just does, so you better find some other reasons to be there. Sure. And, sure. and some people get it, some people don't. The the younger authors I found have trouble with that concept because they don't realize it, it's, not, it's not a sprint, it's a they marathon. Want the money. Yeah. And I've done shows where three day shows, Friday sucked. Maybe one sale. Saturday was so so, and then Sunday we sell out of almost everything we had with us. Well, and then I, I tell authors, I promote authors, uh, if you're hiring me to make you a New York bestseller, it's not going to happen. If you're in it for the money, then you need to keep your day job. I sell for like a St. Pete bestseller. Yeah. I mean, small town America, you know, three <laughs> copies. I, I'm good with that. You know, hey. Yeah. So somebody can make me a bestseller this weekend. I mean, yeah, you come out and buy it. three books, I'm happy. You're good. <laughs> but I said, you know, you have to be in the right for the money, the right reason. Oh, to yeah. Do it. Because if you're here for the money, you're not going to make me wealthy. Yes, there are some oh. who make a living at this and make good money. But they're few and far between. Well, like I always tell people, you got to be in mind, like, I won't say the number's 80%, maybe like 78 or something. 80% of all authors have a second job. Sure. Um, I always use the example of uh, Rod Stewart on uh, the Maggie May album. Mm -hmm. Maggie May was a B-side. Correct. It was never supposed to be played on the radio. That's right. Some DJ screwed up, and all of a sudden it became a number one hit. Yep. And that's the example of writing. I mean, we, like I said, my wife and I support a lot of local musicians. And I've seen some musicians, local St. Pete musicians, who are just phenomenal. I mean, I don't understand how they don't have a big recording right. contract. Yeah. And it really does boil down to the right thing at the right time. You know, you don't want to sound arrogant when you say this, but you have to be confident in what you're doing. Sure. You know, like I tell people, if you take all identification off the novels, names and everything else, I'll put any of mine up against anybody else's, and half the people will like mine better. Probably. Now, half the people will like that one better. Um, but, you know, I think once you get to a certain talent level, you got to have a certain amount of talent. Because I used to, I actually used to think anybody could do what I did. And that's not true. Because I said, and I think anybody can write a novel. Whether or not anybody else will want to read it is a different story. Exactly. So it does take a certain amount of talent, just like a musician takes talent. But I think a lot of people miss out on the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't get that right break, you're never going to make it. Right. It really is the right thing, the right time. I mean, like this weekend, we're, we're around the airport. We could have a major publisher acquisition agent walk through because he's bored. Exactly. Pick up five random books, and one of those may be a bestseller right. that would never gone anywhere otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, Aragon book... The story was, yes. Sorry, you, yes. you know what I'm talking about, don't yes. you? Yeah, like some by his niece or nephew or something like that exactly. bought the book. He was selling like eight books of co uh, store signing. He's mm -hmm. lucky. His parents refinanced the house to self publish the book, and the niece gave it to her uncle, who was a big acquisition agent for like some major publisher. Yeah. And then it, it yeah. took what, what kind of, that's, that's, that's stupid luck. Yeah. And you know what? God bless him. I'm happy for him. You know, right. I, don't, I don't begrudge him. I mean, I want that kind of stupid luck. Exactly, but that's what you all wish for, yeah. you know, but, for that one shot. But, you know, my thing is, I've been fortunate, you know, because my, my real job, I'm a special ed teacher. I'm two years away from full pension. I've been fortunate enough to do a job I love and then have a, a, a side career, which mm -hmm. I've done for 27, 28 years. I get to tra I've been traveling. I travel the country. I've met mm -hmm. amazing people. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of fun doing it. And I also get to tell stories that I want to tell. Right. And, and that to me is a great thing, you know. Sure. You know, hopefully this weekend, you know, people, some people will buy some books to go home and enjoy and send me some emails. Hey, I really like it. When's the next one coming out? And, and those make your day. Right. That's what you, that's what you do it Yeah, for. absolutely. Right. You know, and like I said, if you're in it for the money, if you're in it for the glory and, uh, you know. Oh, well, the glory. The I got a, I got a glory that. hat. Yeah. If you're in the wrong business, you know. <laughs> You do it because it's in your heart and it's something you love to do. It is. And like I said, I, I love the, um, like I said, my one friend who, who's an established actor. He actually, actually did an independent movie and that's how I met him because he was uh, my lead in my independent movie. 
which I probably should have talked about. <laughs> uh, that's my radio <laughs> DJ who took gave anti advice okay. on the radio. So it's like a dear Abby with an attitude. Okay. And it's called Dr. Prozac's office. Um, nice. Okay. But we did a, a full length feature movie. Okay, where can they find that? Uh, on Amazon or uh, uh, Prozac with a K. Okay. But that's on Amazon. And you can like rent it for like three bucks. Okay. But uh yeah, we actually did a full length movie and uh, a friend of mine had the uh, cameras and the editing equipment and we did the whole movie for like four hundred bucks. I mean, professional quality, and that, that's like and most of that was a, a salad scene. There, we're, we're having this guy make a salad, and it cost like forty bucks because he kept screwing up. <laughs> so, but uh, anyways, uh, you know, watching my friend Owen uh, write this novel is kind of interesting because uh, you know he's going through something. That, you know, I, I think of my first novel I did like ten years ago, and before that I did some children's books and some comic books and stuff like that. But watching him go through the, the writing process that you know I've been doing for ten years. In, in, in the, the doubts and all that because I think everybody has a doubt can I finish it right. and like I tell people you can finish a story at any point you in you can go you know what I'm just going to write the ending now be done um, rarely do I write the ending for us uh, the last book I just finished I actually wrote the last three chapters before I finished the book because I figured out how I wanted to end it ah. and I, I, my, my, my beta reader is like okay that, that's, that's good just get there now <laughs> So, get that all the way down. Yeah. Okay, we're done with the book. Now I just got to get enough words to make it count. <laughs> I'm going to uh, bring this to a close because, like I said, shortly the craziness is going to ensue in here. I got uh, the, one going now. the book signing takes off at 2 o'clock this afternoon. goes tomorrow. And uh, But I do appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come and interview with me to talk to... Uh, my fans and hopefully new fans of yours and make sure you follow him He's got a lot of irons in the fire got a lot of things going on uh, probably find something that you really like to enjoy if you like the humor if you like you know different things especially the new book he's got coming out when he told me about it I know I'm gonna pre-order it if it's sitting up there uh, but uh, thank you for taking time coming and sitting down and talking and uh, sharing a little bit of your world with my world and I want to thank everyone for watching and this is Andrew from my world have a good day